Okay, so in this section, uh, what we're getting into is how do we come up with a good idea for research? So this section is all about coming up with research ideas, uh, which is something that sometimes it, it comes to you easily, but a lot of the time this is quite challenging and time consuming to try to come up with a good idea. This chapter has uh, quite a few pieces of advice, tips and tricks um, for how to approach this for things to do to make your life a lot easier. Uh, so the first thing that they say, which I think uh, makes a lot of sense, uh, we can all agree with this advice. They say, pick something, pick something that you find interesting for the general topic, right? And you don't have to start off with a very specific idea, but just picking some general subject area that you're curious about is gonna make your life a lot easier because you know, you're gonna have to do a, quite a bit of work to put a research proposal together, to do the research for it, you know, all the articles you're going to have to read. Uh, sometimes these, are, uh, these scientific journal articles are quite difficult to get through. Um, so if it's something that you find fascinating, then that's going to make your life a lot more fun and, a lot, and you're going to tend to put the project off a lot less. Now the book talks about a number of different places that uh, uh, where ideas for research can come from. Uh, one of those we've already talked about, and that's the idea that just as you're doing casual observation, so you're going about your everyday activities as you're doing this, you're casually or informally observing the world. And this can be, you know, you, you see some, your friends or your family members acting in a particular way, and that inspires you, that gives you some idea, hey, why are they doing it? Why are they doing what they're doing or thinking what they're thinking? It gives you some question that you could answer potentially by doing research. Um, so for this to work, obviously, you have to not just be thinking about the research while you're in, you know, while you are specifically sitting down to work on your research proposal. This, this, for this to work, you have to be doing, I guess the way I would put this is you have to be actively actively curious in other words you don't just wait uh, to think about this until you sit down to work on your research proposal but in the back of your mind uh, you have you have the thought okay I'm looking for a research idea and, and I'm just going to tr no, try to notice things that are interesting to me I uh, notice things that I'm curious about uh, very uh, closely related to this the book also talks about the idea uh, that you can you can come up with ideas for research just by noticing practical problems so issues that you might run into or that you see others run into in in your life or in their lives uh, that's a really good reason to do research uh, for example while you're in your classes you might wonder what is the best way to study for my classes for example you might be thinking uh, should i be studying all at once in like a six hour cram session? Or should I s spread out my studying for an exam so that uh, I, I study a little bit every day of the week leading up to the exam? Uh, and then actually in that case, of course, research has already been done and I'll probably bring this up many times in this class that spacing out your practicing, spacing out your studying over a period of time has been shown to be far more effective in terms of remembering the information and solidifying it in your head, then uh, massing it all up together. Uh, but, the, but even though research has already been done on that problem, you know, if you, if you had asked that question and then you looked up the research and you say, oh, somebody who's already studied this, as you're reading up on that, you'll probably find other further things that, uh, questions that haven't been answered. Uh, and that is, that is the next thing uh, that you, a uh, place that you could get uh, ideas from, and that is uh, reading reading past research. And I say reading, but really any place where you're learning about what has already been uh, discovered, this could be uh, an audio book or it could be uh, watching a TED talk on YouTube. There's all different sorts of places to find out about this stuff. In this class, we'll spend a lot of time uh, looking up peer-reviewed scientific journal articles, and those can be a really uh, wonderful place to get ideas. Uh, that's actually one of the best places to look for, okay, what's already been done, and use that as inspiration to think about what, uh, where to go next, 
where what study could you do that would just add the next uh, level of understanding to this particular subject. Um, both of these, by the way, both the idea of of doing of getting getting ideas from practical problems and reading about past research, these also only work if you are being actively curious. Uh, as you're going about life running into problems, you need to have in the back of your mind that you're looking for a research question. As you are reading past research, it will only be useful in terms of coming up with an idea if you have in the back of your mind that you're going to be asking questions about it. So as you read through some of these articles, you may ask things like, well, what are the limitations of this study? What questions do I have that the, uh, that the authors of the study didn't really answer? Or were there flaws in their study that we could uh, that we could test with uh, with a new uh, piece of research. So, in, in case you didn't pick up on it, one of the biggest things that I'm that I'm trying to show you here is that the best thing you can do to help yourself out, um, which I don't think that they emphasize as much as they should in in the textbook, is this whole idea of being actively curious, keeping this in mind and giving yourself time for your ideas to develop, uh, not expecting them to just uh, be something that you can come up with right before uh, you have to put your research proposal together. You can make your, your life a lot easier and produce a much better uh, project if you are letting these ideas brew or mull or stew over time. Now, Another thing that they say in the book is that another place you can get ideas from, they, they talk about the idea of getting it from uh, sort of having the idea just pop into your head, having a flash of inspiration. And the classic uh, story of this, there's all kinds of stories of this happening in science. Uh, probably the most famous is the idea of Archimedes. And they, and they use this as an example in the book that Archimedes uh, is getting into his bathtub and he, uh, as he, as he starts to get in, it displaces the water in the tub and this causes him to just have this sudden moment, this light bulb goes on over his head, this sudden moment of inspiration and he runs down uh, the street, he just jumps out of the, the bath and runs down the street yelling Eureka, right? And this has become famous as um, as, a, as a, a word that we think of, okay, yeah, stereotypical scientist has his eureka moment uh, where he just suddenly realizes the answer to his question or suddenly has this wonderful uh, idea that seems to come out of nowhere. And the thing that I think they don't really uh, adequately state in the textbook is that these light bulb moments, these flashes of inspiration We've actually done research on those and they don't come out of nowhere. They seem to, but that's for a very good reason. What, what's really happening is these moments, they come after you've been for a while doing all of this. And it is only after you've been engaged, immersed, what I'm going to say, really immersed in all of this. Then, after that, at the end of this long, hard, tedious, difficult, uh, uh, and interesting period of total immersion and engagement with the subject, that is when you have these great ideas. These ideas are the end product of learning all kinds of background knowledge about the subject, uh, some subject that you're interested in. Uh, noticing things about it as you go about your life, noticing problems that can be solved um, and, and looking for answers to those problems. By being actively curious as you engage repeatedly with the world and with research on a topic that you're interested in, that is what leads to these seeming flashes of inspiration. And the reason why they seem to come out of nowhere is that how the, how the brain works is that we we tend to uh, work very well or, or come up with good ideas when we, um, when we sit and we engage with a topic very, in a very focused way. We think hard about something. We study something with great intensity. And then we stop because 
that's that's really hard on our brains. Our brains need time to consolidate and process all that information that we've learned. So we take a break and we think that we have stopped thinking about that thing because we're not consciously aware that we're continuing to process the information. But it turns out that when you engage with something with a lot of intensity, when you've been reading a lot of articles on a subject or thinking and wondering about something for a while, that even when you go off to do something else, to get a cup of coffee, to take a shower, to go hang out with some friends, to watch a TV show, that actually gives your brain an opportunity to, in the background, continue to process this stuff, solidify the ideas, and make connections between the ideas in your brain. So there's actually a lot of research to uh, support the idea that uh, this sort of diffuse uh, mindset where you're not thinking about this thing, where you go from being really focused to having this diffuse mindset, that that actually helps you come up with these ideas. And that is the point at which, you know, after you've stopped actively, consciously thinking about it for a while and giving yourself a break, that's the point at which you suddenly have this flash of inspiration. So how do you put this all together in terms of uh, how to succeed in this class? And, and, and also I should mention that I'm not expecting anybody to have this just incredible um, uh, Archimedes or Einstein, excuse me, Einstein level sort of idea. We're just going to be trying to add a little bit to our, our research that's already out there, the knowledge we already understand. We're just saying, what's the next step that we could take? Um, so, but with that said, how do you put all this together? How do you uh, apply what I've just talked about in this class? Basically what we're saying is, okay, I'm, I'm going to, you're gonna be going about your life. You're gonna be uh, talking to different people. So that gives you a chance, um, you know, and just hanging out with people and not doing things not related to this class. And that gives you a chance to do casual observation or notice practical problems that come up. But one of the biggest things is I'm gonna be giving you assignments to go out there and look in the, re in the literature so you'll be reading about past research on something and I'm going to try to give you some flexibility so that you can pick something that is interesting to you for some of these assignments. Uh, so as you are pulling these articles out of the, uh, the, the research literature, um, pick things that are interesting to you. Pick things that you think might be the stuff that you'd like to do your research proposal on. Uh, if you later change your mind, that's fine, but at least you're giving yourself a chance to be reading about things that you're interested in, and maybe that will inspire some ideas for uh, for your research proposal. So, so the idea is I'm saying as you go through both the stuff you're doing outside of this class and as you go through the reading and assignments for this class, uh, you can do yourself a lot of good. You can make your life a lot easier if you're just cultivating this actively a uh, curious perspective, st intensely studying some stuff, looking up some, some articles, and then giving yourself the time uh, to mull over those, to think over those, uh, to take a break. And then that is when you'll start to have these ideas uh, coming to you for what to do for your research. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of generally how to approach this. We'll go into more detail on a lot of these things as we go forward, but hopefully that helps.